There we go. Can we get some light? Can we get some light in this place? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 548, folks. Coach Burke. All right, folks. Good morning to you. If you're watching this, I'm Coach Michael Burke. I live outside of Nashville, Tennessee. I just finished my morning workout at the Rock Box, and that's boxing plus functional fitness. And, and I got a great message for you this morning. Every Tuesday, Thursday, pretty much every day, folks, I bring you either a morning drive or I bring you a rhythm. Life happens in a rhythm. Your heart beats in a rhythm, Charlie. When you get out of rhythm, when you get out of rhythm, man, I'm telling you, it gives you permission somehow in your mind. It gives you permission to, to give up on something. Okay, I'm telling you, I took the day off from the gym yesterday. I still exercise, but I took the day off from getting up at four, being in the gym. You know, it's not a bad thing every now and then because I needed a little bit of sleep, Thomas Davidson. But, man, once you take one day off, you try to come back the next day. I'm telling you, man, your little mind starts playing tricks on you saying, you know what? Take another day off. It's okay. And then two turns into three, three turns into five, and then you just quit which is what people do, folks. Now, I got a great message. I want you to hone in with me because I'm coaching a young man out of uh, Arizona that I really like. He probably watches these videos. I hope he does. And he called in yesterday and, and kind of said, man, how do I get out of this contract I'm in? And people do this from time to time. But it got me thinking, uh, Joseph Goodman, what's up? Um, it got me thinking how you handle, good morning, Samantha. How you, how do you, some things you never do, okay? Some things you never do. If you want to be a person of interest, and today I'm doing person of interest in my lodge. If you truly want to be a big time person, there's some things you never do, man. You never, ever do, okay? And I'm going to give these to you this morning, Ernie Randall. Number one, you never quit. You never quit, man. If you agree to do something, you, you sign something to do it, you see it through to its conclusion. You don't quit halfway. You don't quit because you don't feel like it, okay? So one thing you never do, this is a sign. Big time people look at people that quit. And they go, man, that woman, that man can never can never see it through to its conclusion, man. Big time people see that as a sign of weakness because it is a sign of weakness, okay? It's like, man, I don't feel like it. I've got myself in the bind. I need to get out of this. No, big time people see it through. Okay, I got a crappy deal on a printer we're using right now. Okay, if you're out there watching me, the guy who sold me that, you know what I'm talking about. I got a crappy deal on some kind of other thing I signed a contract on. Man, I can't quit. I, if, I, if I want to take these Range Rovers back, okay, before the lease is up, they don't care if I, don't, if I decide I want something else. You can't quit, man. I signed an agreement. I got to see that agreement through to its conclusion, man. Big time people don't quit. Number two, they never use their kids as an excuse. And this is something too many people do, man. Okay, having another kid does not shut down your life, folks. Okay, I got two kids. My two kids have never, never in a million years kept me from doing anything. Okay, they never asked me for money. They kept me from signing up for something. They never, right, like people use their kids as scapegoats. Okay, big time people don't use their kids, man. You got obligations with your kids, but they don't keep you from doing things. Okay, it's not like, uh, it's not like you're going to you know, not be able to do something because of your kids. I hear this all the time, man. So this is, your kid's not going to cost you uh, uh, so much money that you just quit living, okay? So quit using your kids, man. I got a kid. I'm having a kid. We're, we're expecting a kid. So I can't commit to this. Come on, folks. Big time. <laughs> you, you, you think big time people? Oh, what's going on with my thing this morning? Here, let me straighten it up a little bit. Do you think, uh, do you think big time people would ever use that as an excuse not to do something? Come on, man. Think Trump would say I can't run for president because I got because I got kids? Of course not. Okay, that's what I'm saying, Joseph. Do it for your kids, man. Go make some more money for your kids. Give your kids a better life. Don't use your kids, man. When people start going there. I'm like, come on, man. Shit, this is ridiculous. Big time people. If something is not working, always just go to the source and go. How do we make it work? Okay. If I'm in a contract with someone and it's not going the way I want it to. Good morning, Bart. I go to that person and I go, you know what, man, uh, Rocky, I go, man, what can I do? It's not quite going the way I anticipated this going, okay? I, I really, 
I really want to get the maximum value out of this. It's probably something I'm not doing or something I don't know or something I can do to get better. How do we make it work? Big time people say, how do we make it work? Okay, that's what they do. They so And they always take total responsibility. This is Jocko Willick. This is uh, all the people that extreme ownership. What, what am I not doing that I need to be doing, right? If I'm not hitting my sales goals, I don't blame it on my manager. If I'm not happy in life, I don't blame it on my wife. If I'm not happy, if I'm not getting where I want to go, I don't blame it on my kids. I don't blame it on my parents. I just simply say, big time people say, man, what am I not doing? There's something here that I got to get better at. Okay, these are things that people say that I'm like, okay, I coach some of the biggest people in the world, okay? I, I mean, you know, in comparison to most of the world, I'm talking people that are doing well. They're doing well, not just financially. That's not the only uh, criteria, but they are doing well financially, but they're also doing well spiritually. They're doing well physically. They're doing well mentally. And I watch and observe, man, and I listen to their language, and I listen to how they respond to things. They don't get involved in drama. They don't blame other people. They don't make a lot of excuses. They don't. They don't uh, say. They don't blame external factors. They don't put their destiny in external hands. They don't say, "Well, it, it could work for them, but it won't work for me." Like what you do is you got to start asking, "What is the language of winners? What is the language of big time people? What is the language of those people who are producing at the highest level?" Then. We have to remain in a humble, hungry, and forward posture. We can never fall victim to false positive. And false positive is where you begin to believe, right? You begin to believe you're a lot better than you really are. Okay? False positive is where you, you begin to believe you are, you're, you're, you're better than you are, man. And I have a criteria. Financially, if you're not earning a million dollars a year in personal income, you're not there. You got a lot to learn. Once you get to a million... There's obviously a whole lot more to get, but if you're not at a million, man, you ain't there. That's just the criteria I use, okay? So if you tell me you're making 250000 if you tell me you're making 400000 if, if you tell me you're making five hundred, financially, I'm going to say, okay, good good for you. You get to a million of personal income on your tax returns, okay, or above, and now, now I'll say, at least you figured something out. We're not there, but we're at least figuring something out, okay? Because I don't think you luck into it. Few people do, but very few. So listen to this language. Like, I know this is a tough topic for a lot of people to hear. You come to me and you want to get motivated and you want to hear me. Listen, I'm trying to motivate you, man. I'm trying to challenge you some here. I'm trying to say, wake up and let's go. We don't use language. Like, think about going to Nick Saban and using, you're going to cut Alabama because you're kids. Or you're going to not perform because your wife was mad at you before you left to go to work today. Or so-and-so, your boss is mad at you. Or these three people at the office don't like you. Like, think about telling, think about going to Saban right and saying that and think about what he would say like you wouldn't even go to him and say that okay i try to put off i was talking to uh, a, a good friend of mine last night who's big in the medical f field and we were talking about just putting out an energy to the marketplace that is so powerful and so strong that it really sends a message to the world that man you ain't messing around you don't you don't whine. You don't complain. You don't make excuses. You don't, like, like just your energy. Wallace Waddles in The Science of Getting Rich called that an impression of increase. You're, you're a person of advancement. And you're putting off such a vibe that you're attracting a lot of opportunity into you. Well, you won't attract opportunity if you put off whining, pouting, complaining, quitting, blaming, pointing fingers like you want man you're never going to get any sympathy from people you're never going to get any support the worst thing you can lose from a person of interest man is their support they just take all that support and give it to somebody else so if you're out there robert martinez good morning and you're thinking about this i want you to really take an inventory today of the language you use and if you catch yourself at any time taking your future and putting it in somebody else's hands if you catch yourself today blaming somebody else for your lot in life. If you catch yourself trying to quit or get out of something that you committed to, if you catch yourself today, right, using low-level language that's wasted in time away from your dominant focus, right, Jimmy? Then I'm telling you, man, just have some kind of mental, mental something that snaps you out of it. Recognize it. Boom, boom. It's like, man, I ain't allowing this negative energy. Right, Samantha, I'm not allowing this negative energy into my life, man. I put off such an aura 
it's like, man, don't even bring it to me. Don't even walk up to me and, and give me an excuse. Don't even, like I teach my sales team when people complain and call in and I don't like this, I don't like that. I teach them to say, man, would you take that excuse to Coach Burton? A woman called in the other day who hasn't been showing up for class and she, she talked and I answered the phone. And she said, oh, I didn't know I was gonna get Coach Burt and I really called in to quit. And I said, let me ask you a question. Can you quit something you haven't committed to? Have you showed up every Monday to get coached? Have you got yourself in close proximity to me? Have you participated in any of the things we've done? Have you ever come to my lodge? No, 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 okay. Then help me, help me to understand Right, Robert, help me to understand how you're quitting something you hadn't even, you hadn't even started. You can't quit something you don't commit to. Right, Moshita? You, 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 I said, you ain't quitting on me. You're quitting on you. Because I'm going to keep showing up and I'm going to keep winning. Whether you show up or not. Now, here's what's interesting. You know what she said to me? She said, Coach, it's hard to decommit when I'm talking to you. You're so committed that I feel like crazy just even calling you and trying to decommit. And she went online. This is the power of the energy you put out. A woman who called in to quit went online and bought today's person of interest. She's in her coaching program, not showing up. She talked to me for, for five or ten minutes. She said, man, you're so committed that, man, I, I, can't, I can't even decommit. And went online and bought another product from me. Folks, that's the kind of aura you want to put out, man. I would never call a big-time person. Never and say, man, my kids won't let me. Hey, I can't come because, you know, my kids, my kids are keeping me from doing this. Right, David Perez? I don't, I just don't use, I know not to use language like that, okay? I know not to try to quit things that I commit to, okay? Now, if something's not going the way you want it to, and that's going to happen in life, you simply say, man, hey, help me to, under, help me to understand what I got to do to make this work. What can we do together? What can we, uh, right? It's like I was coaching, a, you know, a coach yesterday and a, a health coach yesterday when they were talking about, man, some people quit because they didn't get their, their food or their fuelings in time. Come on, man. If, if you're looking for an excuse, any old excuse will do, folks. You'll find an excuse if you're looking for one to get out of something. But you got to quit trying to get out of things and you got to man and woman up and show up to things. That's really what we got to do. So what's the message today, man? I'm doing person of interest at the lodge. You still got time to get in. You still got time to get in, man. It's 10 o'clock this morning. These are habits of big-time people. These are habits of producers. These are habits of big-time players. What's up, Jim? These are habits of people that produce at the highest levels, man. There's certain things they don't do, okay? They don't whine. They don't complain. They don't make excuses. If you're going to be a person of interest, it's a simple decision backed up by commitment. I'm going to become known. I'm going to become famous. I'm going to be somebody in the world. Right? I'm going to matter. I'm going to impact people. Okay, Now, with this commitment, it's going to come a lot of inconvenience, man. It's going to come a lot of freaking inconvenience. See, I get up at 4 and work out at 5 so I can see my kids at 6. It's totally inconvenient to me. Them damn kids. Look at them. There's them damn kids again. Okay, Now, that, that's what some people say. No, nope, man, I got to sleep in. I can't go to the gym because of my kids, man. I don't get to see my kids in the morning. No. Get up an hour earlier and go to the gym folks and then see your kids okay see how people talk i'm like okay for me to make it work i gotta go at 5 a.m okay if i'm committed to doing everything so it's a good lesson today folks it's too much false positive in the world it's too much low level thinking in the world there's too much false positive like man i want to be big time but i don't want to do what big time people do okay and, and we're we're not doing that man success is inconvenient it's out there my granddad used to say it's out there you just got to reach up and go get it so, hope you guys are doing great. Person of interest, 10 a.m. this morning, folks. 57 bucks. Get in. Monster Nation. Boom. Had a Monster Nation person come in last night. Had a million-dollar getaway come in last night. Down in Florida. Had a great sales day yesterday. We're going to come back. Guess what? We're going to do it again today, folks. We're going to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. So, I'm Coach Burp. Everybody needs a good coach in life. Sometimes just to get right up in their ass. That's what a good coach does, man. It's like, don't bring that to me again. Okay? If you want to be big time check your excuses at the gate folks all right so joseph good to see you you guys have a great day you know i love you i'll, I'll be seeing your personal interest in just a little bit man have a great day god bless you